Hi, it's Corey Doctor from Electronic Frontier Foundation. I'm here with Kyle Weens from iFixit, and we're back at the uh, U.S. Copyright Office 1201 uh, exemption hearings at UCLA Law School. And Kyle, you've uh, talked uh, on several of the categories, but all related to repair, and iFixit obviously are the kind of great repair shop in the sky for so many people. <laughs> Absolutely. I wonder if you could talk about your general impression of the of the hearings now that we're in the final stretch. We've been here for three days. What do you make of it all? Well, this is it, it feels like we have to go through effectively a lawsuit in order to be able to fix certain things. Uh, we've been having discussions about repairing tractors, about repairing uh, modern vehicles, where like on a Tesla, the onboard diagnostic port doesn't give you much, so you have to get into the wireless telemetry, uh, and it's just, it's a it's a very tedious, very legalistic process to just get the ability to tinker with and repair our stuff. I was really struck today when you were talking about the um, example of uh, data that is inside a car, telemetry from inside a car that's generated by the owner of that car driving that car. And um, the gentleman from Harman, who was arguing against an exemption to allow people to access that. And Harman is making these telematic systems that are in, in the right, super. Right, yeah. And he said, we don't own that data. And you said, no, no, I own that data. That's my data. It's my car. I'm driving it. And he said, no, you don't own it either. Right. The manufacturer owns it. That's their perception is that the manufacturer owns it. And that's what the manufacturer is going to claim. And it's, the okay, where is your car right now? How fast is it going? What's the, what's the RPM of the engine? And they're saying that the manufacturer owns that. It's absolutely incorrect. It strikes me that when we, when we talk about repair in the context of copyright, we get at the true nature of 1201, what, what 1201 has become. Maybe it was envisioned as a way to stop people from jailbreaking their DVD right. players. What it seems to have become is a way to force people to arrange their affairs to benefit yeah. company shareholders. It's all about control. Yeah, uh, 1201 fundamentally, and, and everything that we're doing with, with right to repair, with, with this is we have to go and ask for permission to do something with a thing that we own. And the, the, the flow of control has passed beyond, if, you know, if I have a chair, or if I used to have a car without electronics, I could do anything I wanted with it. I could turn it into a race car if I wanted. Now, if I want to turn my car into a race car, I have to go and modify software, and I have to go and get permission under the Copyright Act to do that. Yeah, it seems like in the old days, we had this argument that we made that you bought it, you own it, and that should be the end of it. And, and as that argument has fallen on deaf ears, we've come up with all of these other arguments. You know, recycling creates jobs, or repair creates jobs, mm -hmm. or repair creates, uh, lets people get more value out of their goods, or it lets people customize things, or lets people who have disabilities uh, customize for their uses. Mm -hmm. But I mean, fundamentally, isn't the answer to this, this is mine, and if I want to do something weird with it, it's none of your damn business? Exactly. It's, it's about ownership. I mean, and that's, I mean, you got Aaron Przanowski's new book, The End of Ownership. And this is what we're seeing. The moment you put software into it, you move from a, uh, a personal property law where we can do pretty much anything we want with the things that we own to now intellectual property law is this morass of complications that involves legal treaties and interpretations and case law. And yeah, it, it's, it's incredibly confusing and frustrating. Aaron's been following the tweets uh, oh, from the thing and, and commenting on them with things like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard anyone say about copyright. <laughs> It's well, helpful having the, the legal professor win. Yeah, well, Kyle, um, you've been a really effective spokesman for the right of people to do weird things with their stuff, even if other people don't understand why they want to do it. Um, you've been great at both articulating why someone might want to do something that someone else can't understand, but also at um, articulating why it's no one else's business, even if they can understand. And I really have to thank you for it. It's been great to watch you do your thing in action today. I know that your normal milieu is, you know, with your sleeves rolled up and a tool in your <laughs> I'm hand. I'm tinkering. And, yeah, yeah, it's strange for me to be in a, effectively a courtroom. But you're doing well in, in, in there. And I, I really want to thank you for, for what you did for all of us today.